Hi everyone, welcome to my review of the Hugo 2, the Court Hugo 2, which is one of my, well, I think it's actually my favorite transportable device when it comes to sources that I use to drive headphones and IMs with. So I have to be honest, I don't drive a lot of headphones with this anymore, but I know that a lot of you do, and a lot of you who might want to own the Hugo 2 will also want to drive headphones. So in this review, I will talk about IMs that I've driven this with and what sort of coloration I get from Hugo 2. So I'll talk about the Roma Audio Jewel. I'll talk about... um the Empire Ears Odin, which I have here in this wonderful LR Tech case uh, that I got in Singapore when I was there this year. I also will talk about uh, the Sennheiser HD 650 because it is a very popular headphone and I feel like a lot of people will relate to the sound of this and how the sound of the 650 changes on the Hugo 2 and um, the Hyphenman Edition XS, which is a planar magnetic headphone, which I think, you know, is an interesting discussion to be had because it, it is a planar and planar like more power uh, often. So in case you're wondering whether the Hugo 2 can drive a planar like the Edition XS, I think that's a discussion worth having. However, the way I'll structure this review is I'll talk about a lot of specs because this is a very specced out device. And a lot of you who will buy this will buy this because it is a bit of a jack of all trades. As a matter of fact, it might even be a bit of a master of all trades because it does a whole bunch of things in terms of its specs, in terms of uh, the user configurable options, filters, what have you, crossfeed, etc. And then after talking about specs, I'm going to talk about sound. So I'll draw comparisons to the Mojo, the Mojo 2, the Dave, which I have owned in the past. And I'll talk about R2R DAX, which I feel like are an interesting complement to the Cord House sound. And last but not the least, I'll talk about gear impressions, i.e. I'll talk about the 650, the Edition XS, and my IMs. Okay, moving on. So the Hugo 2 can, of course, be used both at home and on the go with headphones or even in a two-channel system. So, of course, this has a line-level output, a full-function remote control, which I'm not showing here. And there's a lot of flexibility that the Hugo 2 offers with regard to frequency shaping, bringing warm or soft or incisive presentations. And of course, for Hugo 2 uh, headphone listeners, you have these uh, outputs, the 6.35 and the 3.5, both single-ended. And the way I use the Hugo 2 so I can use it with my balanced sort of uh, adapters on my IEMs is I plug in this PW Audio RCA to 4.4 mm adapter, and then I'm good to go. And so that's basically how I use it, the Hugo 2. So, in terms of specs, guys, of course, it's a Cord Custom FPGA DAC. This is 49,152 taps, which is a whole lot of taps, which does aid in bringing more resolution from your music. Seven-hour battery life, which is, I think, quite impressive, given what it does. Uh, so, the USB... So, this has a few uh, digital inputs. So, I'll show you the digital inputs for in a sec. So, of course, this has coax, this is optical, USB, right here, micro USB. This is for charging. And this uh, 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 is compatible with 768 kilohertz. The coax is compatible with 384 kilohertz, optical with 192 kilohertz. There's also Bluetooth aptX input. And, of course, I showed you the headphone out. So, you have one quarter inch, one 3.5, unbalanced RC outs, of course. And this also supports DSD 5112, 8x, including native VSD support. So I'll switch this on so you see what it looks like. So initially, like before I got this, so the lights are dimmed right now. I can sort of, you know, bring them back to their full glory. Uh, I'll let this start first. So the lights, the lighting system, these sort of marble balls, this looking glass, this sort of volume control. If you haven't seen this, in person can throw you off in pictures but i feel like once you see this in person there's something really artistic fun playful and logical about the way the lighting system is structured because it does go from warm to cold in terms of the uh, spectrum so let's say for example this volume knob right this volume control this offers you one db increments so it starts off with red which is the warmest color which essentially gives you let me just turn the lights on a bit so see, what I did here is if I just hold these, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a brighter presentation of the lights. So now you have a brighter presentation of the lights. 
and I made these brighter so it's more easy for you to see on the camera. Uh, so you can dim the lights like I just showed by holding down on these two buttons. And I'll talk about what these buttons do. So it starts with the warmest color, which is red, right? And then it moves on to yellow, and then it moves on to green, and then it moves on to cyan and blue, and goes all the way to white. So it's a very logical color sequence, if you know what I mean. And that color sequence is adherent with these controls as well. So this whole color schematic is not as difficult as you might think to you know pick up and retain. These are bright lights and you can dim them. So essentially what happens is this is of course the you know the power on and off button. This is crossfeed and you have three levels of crossfeed. This is input. So with this, you know, if, if it's in white, that just basically means I'm gonna be using the USB, the micro USB input. This is the filter. So the filters are interesting and I feel like basically what happens is the white filter is sort of the reference filter. The green filter is the high frequency roll off filter. So it's slightly warmer. The orange filter is sort of like the court mojo smooth filter. And the red filter is the warmest by far because it's mojo plus high frequency roll off. And it's not like exceedingly warm. The Hugo 2 never gets exceedingly warm because it is a sort of an analytical presentation that we'll talk about in the sound section. But it does give you a sense of warmth and a slightly more uh, base impact, I think. Crossfeed wise, I've talked about it. So there are three levels, right? So you start by switching off the crossfeed, which is when this doesn't shine anymore, this sort of light thing. This is light, this is medium, this is heavy, and it does replicate a little more sort of a bind oral experience. And you are able to sort of, you know, get a better stereo image with the crossfeed where, you know, it's slightly less left and right and a little more cohesive in front of you. In terms of other features, guys, so this has a clamshell sort of a precision machine aluminum. And so I have the Van Nuys cover on it, which is a very nice cover because the Hugo 2 without the cover is fine. I just didn't want to scratch it. I don't think the Hugo 2 has sort of unnecessarily sharp edges or anything. And I can pretty much hold it comfortably even without the cover. But the Van Nuys cover is very nice, guys. <laughs> And I like holding it with the cover. I like how the cover looks, so that's why I use it with the cover. But you can get this in two colors. This is the black, which they call the natural black. Which, uh, I'm sorry, the satin black. But you can also get this in a silver, which they call the natural silver. So battery-wise, this has inside two rechargeable 3.7 volts, 9.6 um, watt-hour lithium-ion 2600 milliampere batteries. So this is essentially a DAG, guys, but the output stage is class A. Output impedance is 0 0.025 ohms. Signal to noise ratio is 126 dB, A weighted. Channel separation 135 dB at 1 kHz, 300 ohms. And a power output is interesting because if you're driving really high impedance headphones like this, you're not going to get much power out of it. So it's not an ideal match, although this does sound plenty good on the Hugo 2. You get about 94 milliwatts at 300 ohms, which is the impedance of the Sennheiser AG650. At a lower impedance, like 33 watts, you get 740 milliwatts. At 8 ohm impedance, you get 1 watt. 1050 milliwatts, you get at 8 ohms. So if you're driving very sensitive IMs, you're going to get a lot of power. So it is pretty awesome for IM driving. Contrary to some people's opinions that, you know, it gets too loud, it doesn't. Yes, I never have to go up to the wide volume mark when I drive IMs. I'm pretty comfortable at max yellow and sometimes green, depending on how hard the IM is to drive. But it is pretty nifty for IM drive. Okay, so volume control I've talked about, 1 dB increments. It does sort of save the last known state upon shutdown, with the exception of the line level mode. And it does have auto shutdown after 10 minutes of input and activity. Uh, driver support is, it doesn't require driver with Mac OS X and Linux, but you do require driver support for Windows OS. And inc included accessories include a 2 amp USB charger, a 1.5 meter micro USB cable, a micro USB to micro USB OTG cable, an owner's manual, and of course, an infrared remote control, which I'm not showing you right now. So that's it for specs, guys. Now to talk about sound, which is what I like to do. So it doesn't sound like the Mojo. The Mojo doesn't sound as resolving as this, not even close. It doesn't, the Mojo does not sound as wide as this, and the Mojo OG was warmer, significantly warmer. Moving on to the Mojo 2, the Mojo 2 is uh, a slightly more neutral than the Mojo 1, and but this is even more reference and a little more analytical than the Mojo 2. 
this is more layered and wider than the Mojo 2 and definitely more resolving. The courthouse sound does lean a bit on the brighter side, slightly more analytical, slightly more resolving, very fast transients. So the Core Dave is sort of the pinnacle of the courthouse sound. I have owned the Core Dave, but that was at a time when I was very spoiled by the Holo Audio May. The Holo Audio May definitively has a bit of a treble roll off in the upper treble. So the Holo Audio May, and I know this because of AB the Holo Audio May with a bunch of Denner Frip stacks, which don't have the treble roll off. The Holo Audio May does. Some people think that, you know, the uh, R2R DAX invariably have this sort of a treble spike, which I don't think is the case. I have noticed a treble spike with the Dena Frip stacks, of course, the Terminator, the Ares 2, and even the Venus. But the Hollow Audio May from the Spring, Spring Level 2, the May 2, the May 3, KTE, all have a slight treble roll-off. So when I owned the Hollow Audio May for a long time and I ABed it with the Dave, which I got in, the Dave was a bit too bright for me. The Dave was bright in particular with my Stax headphones. My Stax 009 in particular was a bit fatiguing on the core Dave. And I didn't have the M Scaler because the M Scaler does add a bit of a relaxed sound and a bit of a layered sound and does also enhance the timbre and make it more natural with the core Dave. The standalone Dave, as impressive as it was for resolution and layering and imaging and perhaps even more resolving than the whole audio may, I wasn't able to hold on to the Dave, so I sold it. However, I missed the Dave after many years, after many months rather, and I wanted to sort of get the Hugo 2 in. And it does have a very Dave-like sound. In many ways, it is like a baby core Dave. Uh, it also has sort of like desktop class performance that you get with Spring 2 level DAX, like from Hollow Audio, because I feel like this holds its own, even in its very diminutive form factor with DAX in this price span of $2,300, like the Spring 2. It is as resolving, I felt, as the Spring 2, as incisive, as layered. In many ways, it does perhaps exceed the Spring 2's technical chops in terms of layering, in terms of uh, sort of like pinpointing images. The layering here is just something I can rave about for days because you get sounds coming from various distances from you, from like a meter away to like 10 meters away to even further away. And that sense of that sort of very cathedral-like deep soundstage is something I greatly admire and appreciate about core devices. It is not as evident in the Quart Mojo, but it's definitely very evident in the Hugo 2, the cutest, and of course the Dave. The cutest and the Hugo 2 are somewhat equal in performance, although I feel like the Hugo 2 is slightly colder and slightly more resolving. So I would pair this with warmer amps more often than not, and the cutest I feel like slightly, it was slightly more neutral. So just to give you the full spectrum in terms of the frequency sort of presentation, frequency response presentation, the sub bass here does sound very nimble. It's fast. It doesn't have a lot of linger. The mid bass here is clean. You don't get a whole lot of mid bass warmth. However, it does have a sense of punch. So macro dynamics are impressive. I have heard devices like DAPs, digital audio players that have more macro dynamic punch, but this is impressive in its macro dynamic ability to render accurately transitions from loud to soft passages and vice versa and also this punch effect that you often like with like kick drums and stuff. Mid-range is very neutral. I do feel like upper mids can be a bit forward. And by that, I mean the vocals can be a bit forward and guitars even. So that is fine. I feel like that does allow you to play with this and find different synergies with different headphones and IMs or speakers if that's your jam. Treble wise, I feel like the treble is very alive. It's not particularly bright, but it's very airy. And that might, if you're very sensitive to air frequencies, give you a sense of fatigue. However, again, if you have the right synergy, this will be a very resolving. So I personally like my DAX and my DAPs to be analytical. And I often have an, another sort of secondary DAP or a DAC that is warm. So this very ably fulfills the role I need from a DAC that is very reference. So that is basically how I describe this DAC. Okay, gear impressions. Starting with the Sennheiser HD650. So I played a Pineapple Thief track called Tear You Up. And from the 30 second mark to the one minute mark, there are these bass guitar pulls that I don't think was as evident on the HD650 and other lesser DAC amps. And it can get drowned out these bass guitar pulls on this track by the heart hitting drums on this track, but not on this source. On this source, the drums hit hard, 
However, you can very clearly make out the bass guitar pulls. And there are a lot of transitions from louder to softer passages on this track. And 650 does very capably keep up with his dynamic swings on the Hugo 2, which is not something I've heard 650 do very well on other sources because it is not the most dynamic headphone, honestly. So it is overall a very dynamic source, guys. Uh, and it does improve the layering and the staging of 650 considerably. The 650 staging becomes more continuous and less three blob because this is infamous, the 650, for having a very three blob sound stage from like, so you get sound from left ear, right ear, and the center. However, the Hugo 2 does make this a little more continuous, so you get a more holistic sense of stage, which I love. So it punches more hard than I think I've ever heard 650 punch. It doesn't fix the 650 sub bass roll off completely, even though sub bass sounds a bit thicker. And the Hugo 2 does wake up the treble of the 650, so that's worth keeping in mind. It's overall a fantastic presentation. It doesn't rival like $3,000 tube amps, OTL tube amps that I've tried with the 650, where I think 650 really wakes up. But the Hugo 2 for its price point is pretty phenomenal. Of course, it's way more expensive than the headphone that I'm showing you. So there is that. The Hyphiman Edition XS, which is a wonderful planar magnetic headphone. And I feel like, I dare say, it's quite cheap for what it does because it can, it is like within biting distance of the performance of a Hyphiman Aria, if you if you take my word for it. The Hyphiman Aria is one of my favorite headphones and I've reviewed it in the past. So do feel free to check out my review. I'll drop a link to in the description to my previous Hyphiman Aria reviews. Edition XS, I feel like is 80 to 85% of what the Aria does, perhaps even more. It doesn't have the sound stage of an Aria or the resolution, but it's a very resolving, convincing, spacious sounding planar magnetic headphone. This is a year old and it's held its performance really well. It's held, it's, it, you know, it stayed together really well. And a lot of people knock Hyphen headphones for QC, but I've had zero issues with QC on this edition XS from Hyphen. Okay, so I played the track Slipped by the National and it's a convincingly superior presentation of the 650 as you'd imagine. Now, what happens when you switch to the six, uh, edition excess from the HD 650 is that you get a sense, a better sense of lower level signals, like more vocal inflection, more emotion in vocals, more sort of echo in the sound stage, more background vocals. Background vocals just sound a little more present. You get a larger stage and you just get more realism, guys. And I have to say, the synergy between the edition excess and the Hugo 2 is phenomenal. So this do does drive the planar edition excess really really well so i played the track tear you up again by porcupine tree and this sounds more cohesive on the six uh, edition xs cymbal crashes are more audible it's, it sounds convincingly more resolving the bass sounds faster the transient sound faster it doesn't slam harder but the layering is just excellent and the vocals sound really natural in the hugo 2 it's not sibilant or sharp or bright at all it's quite addictive this combination guys and then I want to move on to my IEM, starting with the Aroma Audio Jewel. This is a $5,200 IEM that often people like to sort of suggest is the best IEM on the planet, along with the Oriola Australia, perhaps, and the Universe uh, Unique Melody Multiverse Mentor. I've heard the Mentor and the Traily. I prefer this to the Mentor and the Traily because of their BA bass. I'm just not a fan of BA bass. It just doesn't sound natural for me, guys. Okay, this is a very impressive IEM. And the Jewel and the Hugo 2 is basically what you give to a non-audio file. So see these lights have switched off because I wasn't using it, <clears throat> which is wonderful, it saves battery life. This is the combo you give to a non-audio file if you wanna convert the guy to an audio file lifestyle. It's just effing incredible, this combination, guys. Like I've played Black and Eyes by Porcupine Tree so many times but with this combination. You get this sense of immersiveness that is just hard to describe. It's like being in a waterfall with water falling all over you. And in this case, the waterfall is the music. In this combo, you feel like the sound is washing all over you. It's effing incredible. It enhances the dual stage presentation to such a grandiose level that is just incredible. You get sound all around you. You feel like you're in the middle of a concert and there's sound all over you, all around you. Holographic taken to his exponential limits, guys. It's just incredible. The Odin, I have a good, good authority, even from Jack Vang himself, was tuned with the Hugo 2. This is my Odin's, and I have 
uh, I'm using it with the PW Audio First Times cable. It's a beautiful IAM that I still love. It's very transparent. And some people might say the Odin is bright and so on paper you would you might want to you might not want to pair a bright analytical IAM with a bright analytical source. But that just goes to show how difficult it is to sort of predict synergies on paper and it's not as simple as pairing a warm with a bright or bright with a warm source, right? Right, I am the warm source. Um, in this case, they're both analytical, but somehow their synergy comes alive. And honestly, the Odin on the Hugo 2 is the best I am the, on the planet. And I feel like it competes with full size headphones like the Focal Utopia, which is one of my favorites. Like I played Pearl Jam State of Love and Trust. I love the song. And you hear everything on that track, guys. Everything. Like the first, you hear the sub bass of the kick drum more prominently than you will, I think, on most devices. Vedder's voice is separated from Mike McCready's lead guitar in such a phenomenally lifelike way. The separation of Vedder's voice from the lead guitar is just on a different level. It's from a different planet. The separation is just amazing, thanks partially to the Odins and, of course, partially to the Hugo 2. The bass guitar pulls of Jeff Ammon are very palpable, tangible, very visceral, very compelling replay, guys. Just I can't stop raving about this sort of combo. And the other song I want to talk about towards the end of the song, Runaway by Aurora, the TikTok version. There is this beautiful, melodious violin playing, which you hear so well separated from the rest of the track on the Odin's. More than on any other I am, I've tried and I've AB the Focal Utopia 2022 version with the Odin's on this and the Odin in many ways surpasses the Utopia, honestly. So that's it, guys. It is a very resolving device for the price, for the form factor, and a very nifty device with so much going on. Different digital inputs, a lot of user configurable options, transportable, and just masterclass for technical performance, i.e. resolution, imaging, separation, and all that, and also macrodynamic punch. This device is extremely relevant in 2023 and will continue to be as my prediction because according to Rob Watts, there is no Hugo 3 in the horizon. You can still buy this on HeadFi. The used devices are pretty good. I got, I got this used. Or you can buy, buy a new one from Court or from your dealer. But I highly recommend this, guys. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for my next one. Bye-bye.